Hello and welcome back to Complex Analysis. And as always, before we start, I want to thank all the nice people who support me on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, in today's part 15, we will talk about so-called Laurent series. Here, you should immediately remember that these objects will be a generalization of power series. And moreover, they also give us more examples for holomorphic functions. Okay, now in order to understand a Laurent series, we first have to start with an ordinary power series. So we have coefficients ak, and as always, without losing anything, we can fix the expansion point at zero. Moreover, we also know each power series has a well-defined radius of convergence we usually call r. In the worst case, this number would be zero, and the best case would be that this number is given by the symbol infinity. So maybe let's visualize this again in a complex plane, which means we find an open disk where we have convergence. For example, the radius of convergence could be 2. Then we know, for a complex number z with absolute value less than 2, we know that this power series is convergent. However, on the other hand, the series is not convergent when we put in a number w that lies outside the disk. So if the absolute value is greater than 2, we have divergence. However, now the overall idea is that we could also look at the inverse of w. Indeed, it could happen that 1 over w lies inside the disk. This means that the absolute value of 1 over w has to be less than r. Hence, the absolute value of w is greater than 1 over r. And of course, this is simply equivalent. Therefore, we could say that one of the two conditions here implies that the series with a k times 1 over w to the power k is convergent. Therefore, in our picture here, we would find a second circle with radius 1 half. However, now you should see, we are not interested in the inside, but in the outside. So you see, for this formulation here, we get an inverted domain of convergence. In this case here, it stretches from one half to infinity. In other words, this defines a new function with this new domain. And moreover, we also know it's a holomorphic function. Of course, this is simply a consequence of the chain rule. Simply because we have the composition of two holomorphic functions. Hence, in summary, if we write the series with negative powers, we get a holomorphic function. And as we have already seen in the example, the domain is given by C without the closed disk with radius 1 over R. Okay, so here please note, everything came from a power series but the resulting function here is not a power series anymore. So maybe you could call it a power series with inverse powers. Or alternatively, you could write it using only negative powers. This means that we would start with the constant term a0, and then we would go to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. And then we can make it look like a normal power series again when we use coefficients b, k and maybe z instead of w again. However, the front part tells us it's not a power series because we have negative exponents. Okay, now when you look back to the picture, you see we could combine an ordinary power series with this new series here. And what we get would be a holomorphic function defined on this ring here. Hence, I would say, let's define this new function. So as I said before, we just want to combine the two series we had above. So first, we have the ordinary power series that starts with zero and goes to infinity. And second, we have this new strange series that starts with minus one and goes to minus infinity. Now, of course, what we use is that each power series has a well-defined radius of convergence. However, now we have two, therefore let's call the first one R1. Okay, for the second part we already know, we first have to look at the power series, which means we just invert the powers and then we get a well-defined radius of convergence as well. 
Now, as before, when we call this one r, the corresponding radius that is important for us here is 1 over r. And exactly this is what we can call r2. So in summary, we have two series with two corresponding numbers r1 and r2. And both can lie between 0 and infinity, where 0 and infinity are included. Now, as before, the visualization in the complex plane is that we have two circles. And moreover, we have two different domains of convergence. And depending on the values of R1 and R2, they could overlap in such a ring. Okay, now in summary, this is exactly what a Laurent series is. Hence I would say, let's put this into a formal definition. And indeed, formally, we will write this Laurent series as a series that goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Then we have coefficients we now just call a k times z minus z0 to the power k. Now of course, without any problems, now we are able to introduce an expansion point. This is simple because it's just a shift in the plane. Okay, now from above we already know such a Laurent series is simply a pair of two series. Essentially, we just have two power series. The first has the positive powers and the constant, and the second part has all the negative powers. And as we have seen above, the two radii of convergence define our ring. Okay, and now you might see, the second part here is the essential new thing of a Laurent series. Therefore, this series is often called the principal part of a Laurent series. Moreover, as we will see soon, the part with the index k is equal to minus 1 is very important for calculations. And for this reason, the number a minus 1 gets the name residue. Okay, now another important fact you really should remember is that a Laurent series is always a holomorphic function defined on this ring. So formally this means the domain is given by all complex numbers z, which satisfy that the absolute value of z minus z0 is less than r1 and bigger than r2. Now, the worst case would be that this is the empty set, which means that r2 is bigger than r1. And the best case would be that this is almost a complex plane. You see, by definition, the expansion point z0 is always missing. However, later you will see that we often have this best case scenario. Therefore, I would say we use the next video to look at examples of Laurent series. So I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye.